Today I'm sharing all of my best Quest 3 tips and tricks that you need to take full advantage of your shiny new VR headset and ensure you're having the best possible experience. We've got 5 categories to go through and we're starting with some essential settings and operating system tips. By default the Quest 3 is set to 90Hz dynamic refresh rate but you can actually go to settings under system and display and enable 120Hz refresh rate in supported apps. While 120Hz feels super smooth, use it at your own risk as it does drain the battery faster. Next up you can add Bluetooth devices such as keyboards, mice and even controllers. To do that go to your quick settings under Bluetooth and then pair new device. You should now see a list of all your available devices here. You can also use this to pair wireless headphones or earbuds but be aware that there might be a bit of audio lag so test it out first if you're gonna play FPS games or any other titles where super accurate audio sync is essential. If you're looking to spice up your virtual environment you can actually change it by going to settings, personalization and then you'll see all the options listed here. Just install the one you want and hit apply to enjoy your new virtual home. While the pass through is way better on the Quest 3 it's not quite perfect if you want to quickly check messages on your phone so we have the option to enable phone notifications directly in the headset. You can do that by opening up the MetaQuest app on your phone, clicking on your headset then under headset settings you'll see phone notifications. Just follow the steps and you'll be good to go. Multitasking in VR is also possible and it's super simple to set up. Just click and drag any supported app just like this and you can use multiple windows at the same time. If you want them to be bigger just open your quick settings and hit switch view. Now you can resize them by dragging the corner or reposition everything by grabbing the edge of your menu bar here. A big advantage of VR is that it gets you moving and you can actually count your calories and set goals automatically by using the move app. You'll find that in your applications drawer and all you need to do is click on it then put in your details and set your goals and it'll track the calories for you. If you love having friends over and showing them what VR is all about being able to see what the person wearing the headset is seeing is essential. So let's go through a few options to do that. You can find the casting feature under camera in the bottom menu here. Mine's currently grayed out because I'm recording but if you click on it you'll see a list of all the devices you can cast to like TVs and other Chromecast enabled devices. You can also cast directly to your PC by visiting oculus.com slash casting in any browser and it should show up in here as well. If you maybe want to record your gameplay instead the record button is right next to the casting one but there are a few settings I recommend you check out before. Just go to the settings in the camera menu here and you'll see you can select which eye to capture, the resolution, bitrate and even image stabilization options to ensure the best quality for your gameplay. Next up let's go through some shortcuts real quick. As you probably know by now long pressing the meta button on your controller will recenter your view. And since we were just talking about recording holding your meta button and then pressing trigger will take a photo and if you keep the trigger press just a tiny bit longer it will start or stop recording. Also I'm sure you know this but just to be sure double tapping the side of your headset will enter pass through mode allowing you to see your real environment. Moving on to your play space the boundary can now be set automatically with the inclusion of a depth sensor on the Quest 3. Just let it scan your room and it will do that for you. You can also customize the settings for the boundary by going to settings, physical space and you'll see a bunch of options here. Like choosing a different color, turning on glanceable boundary which means when you look down at the floor you'll see the boundary and even some advanced settings regarding the sensitivity or how quick the boundary walls show up when you get closer to them. Now even with the boundary set correctly I have punched my walls and dropped or thrown my controllers more time than I want to admit and here's my Quest 2 controller to prove it. Here are the two biggest life hacks I have when it comes to avoiding that. Firstly get yourself a pair of controller grips. I'm currently using these ones from AMVR on my Quest 3 controllers and they've made a world of change to both comfort and safety. These are made from a rubberized material and the straps themselves are leather. They've got a little battery door here as well for easy access and one thing I urge you to be careful of is that the grips you buy have this tiny hole down here. Many of the cheap ones from Amazon don't and it's gonna interfere with your tracking because there's a tracking LED down there. I highly recommend the AMVR ones as I've genuinely had zero issues with them and the price is more than reasonable too. I've left a link below if you want to check them out. The second life hack is to get a VR mat. I'm not sponsored by the makers of the mat in any way but I was genuinely shocked at how big of a difference it can make. 
I'm using this one from Proxy Mat, but any mat will do. Just make sure it has some sort of bumps that you can feel with your feet to ensure you know where the center of your play space is. I've left a link to the one I'm using in the description below in case you want to check it out. This next tip is especially important for AR and MR experiences. To get the best possible experience, make sure to manually add furniture, doors and windows after scanning your room. This will ensure that the games know where these items are and can use them to make the experience even more immersive. So let's talk about games, because it's likely most of you will use your Quest 3 primarily for that. The first thing I'll mention is that you should not be afraid to buy games because there's a generous and very simple to avail of return policy. You can refund any game or application as long as you have not played it for more than 2 hours and the purchase was not made more than 14 days ago. For most games you'll quickly figure out if it was worth your money in probably the first hour or so. There are quite a few demos available on the store as well and you can find them by just searching the word demo to see the full list. It's not huge, but even if you never plan on buying these, it's still worth playing them for free for a bit. If you also own a VR-ready PC, then many of the games are actually cross-buy, meaning you only need to buy it once and you'll get both the PC and the Quest Native version of the game included. And finally, for the game section of this video, there are actually a bunch of completely free games in the browser on your Quest 3. These are called WebXR games, and you should see them when opening up your browser app. This one, for example, lets you swing through a virtual city like Spider-Man, and while most most of these aren't super complex games, you can play them for free and without having to install anything. When it comes to ensuring your Quest 3 is in pristine condition, here are a few tips to keep in mind. When cleaning your lenses, only use a clean, dry microfiber cloth to do so. Start from the very center of the lenses and work your way outwards with a circular motion. Never use any chemical products for this process as you risk damaging your lenses. The way you store your Quest 3 is also very important and the biggest advice I can give you here is to ensure you never leave the lenses in a place exposed to direct sunlight. The lenses are basically small magnifying glasses and you can burn your displays by doing this. Ideally, you'd have some sort of case or closet to keep it in, but if not, at least make sure it's facing away from any windows. Finally, I highly recommend you only charge your Quest 3 by using the included brick. Same as with any other battery power device, you want to ensure the battery is almost drained before charging it again to keep it healthy and lasting longer. If you do charge it while in use, again only use battery head straps from reputable companies that have thoroughly tested their products. If you use your Quest 3 for PC VR and want the ultimate clarity, make sure to watch this video next. Are there any other great tips I've missed? Be a champ and leave them in the comments below and make sure to like this video on your way there. See you soon guys, cheers!